Welcome to DRTSPR show. This is Dr. Tangilla Shiva Prasad Reddy alias Dr. TSPR. Namaste, Adab, hello and a warm warm welcome to Pujulu, Gaurav Niyulu, BV Acharya Garu. Sir, a hearty welcome at this age. Thank you. Trying to enlighten. Thank you. Thank you. Senior leader in, senior advocate in Supreme Court, seven times advocate general, Karnataka, and he was also part of law commission. I do not know whether this government understands what law commission is. They say colonial law, but 13th law commission, which is there, they have been recommending and amendments were made to the criminal laws also. So we are going to discuss how good this law is. The three newly enacted criminal laws without wasting much time. He was also the public prosecutor in jail Alita's XCM Tamil Nadu Jalalta's case and to his credit, he has been awarded many, many, whether it is literary or legal service awards to his name. And again, I am very fortunate, privileged to host such a gentleman. I call him as a walking encyclopedia. And once again, he is there to enlighten us on those three newly enacted criminal laws in place of, they say, archaic Indian Penal Code, India is there in that, Criminal Procedure Code, and then okay. Evidential Act. So we are discussing the Criminal Procedure Code. And these words, I am still unable to understand, even Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita 2023, a critic, and we are an analyzing it. Sar has already written a blog also on that. So we are going to discuss how good this law is I am still unable to understand the Hindi version and that Hindi is written in English. So is this an imposition? Let me listen. Let us all listen from B.V. Acharyagar. Sir, please. Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Uh, my best, best wishes to all the listeners. And good morning to everybody. Of the three enactments, within such a short time, it is not possible to analyze all of them. So I am concentrating only on this criminal procedure code. Now, Bharatiya Nagarika Suraksha Samhita. Now, let me start with the title itself. Now, the code is Criminal Procedure Code 1973, and the present Sanita is 2023. You can never call it a colonial era enactment because it is enacted in the year 1973, long after independence. And this is enacted after a thorough discussion and so many reports by the Law Commission of India. The earlier procedure code was newly enacted, incorporating all necessary things. Now the present code also says in the preamble, an act to consolidate and amend the law relating to criminal procedure. So, the title should have some relevance to the contents of the code. It relates to criminal procedure. But what does this uh, title given mean? Bharatiya Nagarika Suraksha Sanita means the Indian Citizens Protection Act. Now the contents have nothing to do with this <coughs> protection code. Instead of protection, it is uh, more confusing to the citizens. If at all, if you say it relates to the power of the police, I can understand. Because <laughs> in effect, their powers are increased. That's all. Sir. Now, therefore, the title must have some relation to the contents itself. That apart, Article 348 of the Constitution specifically says that all the bills and acts 
of parliament should be in english language it is not english alphabet what is required it should be english language title itself uh, heading to this uh, article 348 language to be used in supreme court high court acts bills etc and it says all the bills and acts shall be in english language therefore this is not in english language this is contrary to the provisions of the constitution already some repetitions have been filed challenging this portion and kerala high court when it came up for preliminary hearing there was a discussion whether this will apply to the title also <laughs> naturally and the enactment is in then madras high court two days back in solid additional solicitor general tried to justify this by saying that the title is written in english <laughs> alphabet that is not what is required what is required english language and what was wrong with the old code criminal procedure code everybody knows about it now to learn this three will, will itself it be similarly indian penal code now this is bharatiya uh, nyaya shastra uh, it is not it doesn't carry convey the correct contents of course third one is correct nyaya uh, that is uh, adhiniyam relating to evidence act that's all right so according to me this indirectly some people may feel it is a case of indirect imposition of hindi on non hindi speaking people they will find it difficult to understand or even pronounce these uh, things this is first now let us go to the main thing as i already said the code was enacted in 1973 25 years after independence and now there are few amendments to the code though it is called a new code not more than 10 or 15% is any new thing everything is the old code itself reproduced changing the sections here and there and making some small changes now some of the changes are welcome i don't say everything is bad some of the changes they could have been easily effected without changing the whole thing for instance every lawyer every judge every police they know almost important provisions in the code now the new provision simply same wording you change the section it becomes very difficult you see everybody knows 154 is the fir 173 final report 200 private complaint and all that now all this is changed just by giving another number so everyone must have a chart which is the corresponding provision both even more than anyone anyone else police magistrates lawyers everybody will find it. all this confusion could have been avoided if only every change you wanted to make you could have made by amending the present code this is my first submission and this is drafted in a great hurry therefore there are many changes few changes and without due deliberation everybody knows this enactment sir passed after 100 and odd opposition party mps were sent out of the house without any opposite view after all a proper discussion would have been better and according to me this is done in a hurry then i'll deal with some few important topics now one is first information report which is the 
important thing is crime starts from there by giving information to the police. Now section 154 was the former section. Now it is under this, it is 173. Now substance is clear. Under the old IP criminal procedure code also, any offense is committed, you can give complaint to any police station. It need not be to a, uh, a police station having jurisdiction over the area where crime is committed, though it is not expressly stated. Now they make it clear it need not be within the jurisdiction anywhere. But that was the law all along. And therefore, but they have clarified it's a good thing. But then whether the police should immediately register or can they make a preliminary inquiry before registering is a question which was, uh, there was some doubt. Different high courts have taken different. So constitution benches the Supreme Court in Lalita Kumari's case finally said, no, it must be registered immediately if it is a reliable information. Making a few exceptions where it is a matrimonial matter or prevention of corruption act, there are some preliminary inquiry needed. Barring those exceptions, no, it must be registered immediately. Now, they have given a go-by to Supreme Court judgment in Lalita Kumari and have enacted that where the offense punishable is punishable with the imprisonment from three to seven, seven years, the police have absolute discretion either to hold a preliminary inquiry or not. This is most unwanted uh, provision. Only restriction is before holding preliminary inquiry, he must have the order of a DS. That's all. Now, this sort of discretion, either to register or not to register and keep it pending for 14 days, will lead to unwanted complications. Mostly, according to me, wherever a discretion is given, it leads to corruption. Because you can justify your discretion. Here, by giving this discretion, you will uh, approach the police. The accused also will approach. One will insist on uh, preliminary inquiry. Other will say no. And uh, there will also be pressure. In the preliminary inquiry itself, you close the case. The other side will say no. You register a complaint. Why give this uh, discretion? This is, according to me, a provision which is not in the interest of the citizens or in the interest of justice. Then another very peculiar thing is, there are so many offenses where the punishment is less than three years, which are cognizable. Now why you say only three and seven? If it is two years, he has no power. If it is three years and more, he has power to hold preliminary inquiry. What is the rational? I can understand if they had said all offenses below seven years, one thing, more than seven years, and no. So without any uh, distinction, this uh, three to seven years is taken, and this discretion is given, which is an uh, unnecessary thing, which will lead to corruption. Then there is a, if the police do not uh, register, you are given a power to send the complaint by registered post to the uh, superintendent of police, who will either register, then power to go to the magistrate, which were all there earlier also. In this also, similar provisions are enacted. There is nothing new in the matter. But one important change made, which many people say is a great thing in our favor is that you can give 
complain electronically. That means you need not go to the police station. Online, you can give a complaint. Now, on the first blush, everybody thinks it's a welcome. But according to me, it is the most dangerous provision in the court. Now, if reporting a crime, whatever be the nature of the crime, to the police is a very important matter. And any responsible person must give it. That is why law requires your complaint should be either oral in writing and signed by you. You must take responsibility for the complaint. And a person wants to give crime, he need not go in search of the police station because he can give it to the nearest police station. <coughs> but now, electronically means online. Online, anybody from anywhere can give an, any irresponsible false complaint. And the check is, they say, that complaint will not be acted upon unless within three days he comes and signs. Yeah. If that is so, what is the point Why? in having a, a complaint by electronic means? The whole object is defeated. Now we have seen nowadays fake news in this yes. um, so social media. We have also seen mischievous people send false alarm that a bomb has been planted in the airport or in the aircraft or in the railway. It is giving a lot of confusion, false information and all calls. Now here, what will happen if such mischievous elements flood the police station with these complaints and they don't come at all? Let alone three days, he won't come at all. Send some false information and go away. Now, this is an additional burden of the police to find out who is it who has sent the complaint. Right. So, according to me, though this is said to be a progressive measure, it is a measure which will have a lot of uh, mischievous complications and highly objectionable part. Then third, I will come to police remand. As we all know, the magistrate has to be approached within 24 hours of arrest. Thereafter, he remands. Now, he has the power to either remand to the police or to the judicial custody, which will be in jail. Now, for the purpose of investigation, law provided always up to 15 days, not at a stretch. If you find it necessary, give police custody, thereafter judicial custody. Now, this 15 days is retained. But now the amendment is this 15 days remand can be at any time till the investigation is over. <coughs> Even after two days, police custody is over. He is in judicial custody. Again, police can come and say, till the investigation is over. It may be in 60 days, 90 days, and the NDPS, it could be even 180. At any time, they can come and say, I want police custody, and magistrate can give. Now, this sort of power given to the police and to the court is unwanted. It only gives scope for, again, corruption and power of the police to harass the accused even after he has gone to <coughs> judicial custody. Therefore, this, instead of being a beneficial legislation, is a legislation which gives unwanted power to the police. Now, the next topic I will deal with is <coughs> case of further investigation. <clears throat> now, originally, there was no period within which it is to be completed. In the old code also, in the case of certain offenses, 
within 60 days. In the case of murder, etc., 90 days uh, was there. But in the code, a subclause was added in 73 code itself. 173, subsection 8. After filing charge sheet also, <clears throat> if the police find on further investigation some very important clinching material or evidence, he can file a supplementary charge sheet in support. This was a provision mainly intended if the police are able to get some further evidence to strengthen the police, police case, it may be done. But now, in practice, what we find is it is being used for sheer harassment in many cases. And further investigation, never in EFR. There is no check at all. You can do it at any time. That was the position. I know of cases, even now, three, four supplemental charges are filed. In one case, after uh, one year or two years, a supplementary charge is filed, saying the original six accused are not the assailants, but there are eight more, and added them. After another two years, one politician is added, he has abetted. This is a never-ending affair, even when the court is seized of the matter. Now, one Amendment they have made is that where the trial has commenced, you can't hold further investigation without the permission of the court. This is a welcome feature, but it doesn't go far enough. What I say is once charge sheet is filed and the judge or magistrate takes cognizance, he sees of the matter. Thereafter, giving free power to the police to further investigate is bad. He must further investigate only after taking permission of the court, which is seized of the matter. In fact, in the case of Jailalta itself, yeah. after she, she came to power, the police said, we will further investigate. There has been mathematical calculation. It is done only to help the accused to get out of the clutches of law. Instead of Strengthening the police case, this further investigation is used to help the accused to get a clear acquittal. And the law was then the police have the full power, but then the High Court of Karnataka passed that, saying that it is a malafide exercise of power by you. Now they could not have done it if there was a provision which requires. Permission of the court, which yes. is seized of the matter, which is going on the trial. Therefore, the amendment now made doesn't go far enough. They should have said once the judges taken cognizance and the court, the whole case is within the jurisdiction of the court, they can't hold further investigation without the permission. That has not been done. With all this, the provision for further investigation continues. And this uh, remedy which could have been done, not been done. Now the next topic, which according to me is the most unworkable provision in the uh, whole code is regarding the private complaints to be filed. As you know, where the police do not take action, you have a right to file private complaint and prove the case. And in the case of non-cognizable, anyway, you have to approach the matter. And section 200 was the original provision. Now they have made it 223. Same thing repeated, but section is different. Now, as we all know, once a complaint, private complaint is filed, the magistrate reads the complaint and takes cognizance of the complaint. 
then he asked the complainant to step into the box. His statement will be recorded on oath. Then any witnesses on his behalf, that will also be recorded. Then the court will decide whether to issue process to the accused and summon him or not. If he finds the complaint to be either of civil nature or not substantiated, he will dismiss it. This was the position. Only after recording the statement of complaint, his witness has a view of his children. Now, the same thing is repeated in the present code also. But then, at the end of it, <laughs> at the end of section uh, 130, 220, 223. Uh, yeah. yeah. Instead of 200, they have changed it to 223. Jargon uh, of yeah, yeah. numbers. Yeah. That's all. But but the point is this. 223. Magistrate having jurisdiction while taking cognizance of offense on complainant shall on oath examine the complainant and the witnesses present and the substance will be recorded, signed by complainant. This is almost similar to the proof. Then they have added one proviso. Provided that no cognizance of an offence shall be taken by the magistrate without giving the accused an opportunity of being heard. <laughs> See, man. Where is the where is the accused at that stage? Accused is far away. He doesn't know anything about the complaint. And the old code and Sanita doesn't expect a summons to be issued to the accused to call him until the entire evidence of the complainant and witnesses and any further inquiry magistrate earlier section 202 now here it is uh, uh, 225 they can direct a police officer or magistrate to hold further inquiry before deciding whether accused should be called or not. Till then, accused is not there. And there are cases, even if the accused voluntarily comes and says, I want to defend my court, will say no. You settle law. Till then, it is only between complaining and the court. Now, this provision is added without any thought. How can the magistrate give opportunity to the accused to have his say. At that it's, stage, it's, it's almost like a trial. It's almost it like impossible. a trial. No, it is impossible because the very first step is taking cognizance. You file a complaint, the magistrate takes cognizance that an offense is committed. Then, whether accused should be summoned or not, is after all the inquiry. Here, it says, even before taking cognizance, provided that no cognizance of the offense shall be taken by the without giving <laughs> the accused an opportunity. This is putting the cart before the horse. How, how can the accused be there? Yeah. And if by interpretation, I don't know how the courts will interpret it. It is according to me, it is a most meaningless uh, provision this provider. Now, assuming you say power to give opportunity enables him to summon the accused and give him an opportunity. Assuming we will do that. In that case, the moment a complaint is filed, you have to issue notice and summon the accused because it has to be done before cognizance. That means whether there is merit in the complaint yes or, or not. not. Or knowing what the complaint is, even before knowing what the complaint is, right. you summon the accused. What a ridiculous thing. A mischievous man and file a most frivolous complaint showing 20 people as accused. Then all those 20 will be called. 
the raptor you take cognizance yeah only a ridiculous problem right. so we have 8 minutes more sir no therefore i have suggested according to me if at all opportunity to be given they could have given it at a later stage after taking cognizance after the preliminary uh, investigation prelim they find the any right merit time. any merit right. in the and complaint thereafter, thereafter before issuing notice to the accused as an accused you right. summon him and give this has not been done now another <clears throat> very peculiar thing i told you about the fir yeah. you file a yeah. fir magistrate has to uh, uh, record it i mean the station station house officer has to record it now uh, there are two provisions one is under 154 another in the complaint to the magistrate it says police cannot register a fire if it is against a public servant two conditions should be satisfied <laughs> you give a complaint to the police about a public officer who has committed serious offense it says <clears throat> he here again it says not take cognizance against uh, or even complain against a uh, police officer or public public servant unless first you give him an opportunity just like <laughs> as i said about the uh, first give him an opportunity all right giving him an opportunity is all right and next not only giving him an opportunity get a report from his immediate superior get a report from his superior about the circumstances leading to the alleged commission of the offense that means <laughs> a public officer if he wants to be safe he should keep his higher officer in good mood not only that the police must give opportunity not only to public servant servant concern but also his superior and after giving opportunity to both of them then only you can take a action against the public servant ridiculous okay. such yes. a, a unless the public servant is given opportunity to have his say in the matter and a report from an officer superior to such public servant containing facts and circumstances of the incident he is received by the magistrate will the so superior he... officer will give immediately he will never uh, give an appointment uh, nor he will go go against uh, uh, now in a, in, a, in a local area they get uh, cuts from bottom to top <laughs> so whole procedure regarding magistrate giving opportunity to public servant and calling for report from the superior he is back then uh, i'll finish in another 3 or 5 minutes we have 4 minutes another 4 uh, minutes time another uh, another objection i believe the power to hand to accused so supreme court has deprecated you can't do that unless he is a old offender or a terrorist now they have said under section 43 <clears throat> even in a case of murder or counterfeit coin or rape you can handcuff the a murder may be taken place under many circumstances by hand adding abatement and all that you had so many people as accused in a murder case or a rape case and counterfeit coin in such cases why should handcuff be used police police are given this power which is not a good thing of course some good things are also there that is search and seizure videograph they must do it it is a, a positive thing then 
women and senior citizens, you can't call them to the police station. You must record their statement in their uh, residence. And then, uh, then another objectionable is there's a uh, not more than two adjournments in a case. And once the trial commences, it will be completed within two months. You can say it in law, but in practice, is it possible? Can the law lay down how many adjournments should be granted? In a case, here the section says well, not more than two adjournments shall be granted. Is it not going against justice? Therefore, my uh, final conclusion is this is a ill drafted position. Mere amendments would have been sufficient, and uh, whole enactment suffers from these infirmities. Whatever good things are there could have been done by amendment. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was no need for changing all this, but Supreme Court and uh, why Supreme Court has not taken a call? Because justices, chief justices, court officers, all advocates, in unison, once after they understand, debate, deliberate, only then it should go for any new enactments. Am I right, sir? Because you are also part of the Law Commission. And why yeah. is Law Commission is there? Only for such type of amendments. Don't you think there were many various amendments made through Law Commission? Yeah. It is a decision of the government. Done in a hurry, I don't know. Government means it's will of the people, no, sir. Government is on its no. own. It is, it is in the welfare of the people no, of no. India, the citizens of India. What I, what I say is, role of the judiciary is limited. The court can't interfere when legislation is completed. In fact, when these acts are challenged, court said it has not yet come into force. It only after comes into force. Court has right to say whether it is uh, uh, right or wrong. But their scope is also limited. There is also what is known as wisdom of the legislature. If it is totally arbitrary, as I pointed out, some provision, they may strike it down. The provision for giving opportunity to accuse such provisions, they can strike down. If anything is manifestly arbitrary in the provision, it can strike down. So the courts, I hope they are hearing it. They can strike down yeah. if it is arbitrary. So it should all be <laughs> in the interest of Bharatiyata or Indian justice system. That is the only thing we have to say from Correct. here. Now courts are seized of it. I only hope they take due diligence of the justice system, which should reach the commonest of the common, poorest of the poor without any bias or discrimination, come whatever may. Thank you very much, sir.